Ready to bottle your homebrew? Here's how it's done. This video accompanies the bottling steps outlined in our guide to craft brewing. We'll cover sanitizing your equipment, preparing your priming sugar, starting a siphon, bottling and capping your beer. Before you begin, here's what you'll need. Racking cane and filter tip, or a mini auto siphon, transfer tubing and tube clamp, sanitizer, a large pot with a lid, white table sugar, bottles and caps. You'll need 10 12 ounce bottles or eight 16 ounce bottles. You've got options when it comes to bottles. Try our deluxe bottling kit, which includes 10 bottles, caps, and a capper tool. Reuse empty pry off beer bottles with our capping kit. Use empty Grolsch beer bottles. Or try our flip top bottling kits, available in different sizes and glass colors. Sanitizing your equipment. Prepare your sanitizing solution in a bucket, pitcher, or large container. If using our one gallon beer recipes, you should have half of your sanitizer packet left. Mix that with one gallon of water. Sanitize your bottle caps, transfer tubing, racking cane, or your mini auto siphon if you have one, and sanitize your bottles. If reusing old bottles, it's a good idea to rinse them of any dust or sediment first. Be sure to completely submerge and soak all of your equipment for 60 seconds to thoroughly sanitize. Then let everything drip dry on fresh paper towels. Though everything doesn't need to be completely dry before bottling, our sanitizer is safe for contact with beer. Preparing your priming sugar. Add 1.5 cups of water and exactly two tablespoons of white table sugar to a large stock pot that can hold at least a gallon of liquid. You'll transfer your beer into this pot later. Heat water to medium high, stir in the sugar until fully dissolved and boil for five minutes. Remove from heat, cover and let cool completely. Starting a siphon. You'll use a siphon technique to transfer your beer out of the carboy, leaving sediment behind. Start by submerging your tubing in a fresh bowl of water with the clamp attached about six inches down the tubing. Let completely fill with liquid and then close the clamp. Attach the unclamped end to the short end of the racking cane. It is a tight fit, but you only need a small amount of overlap. you have your siphon starter. Transferring your beer. Place your carboy on a tall surface like a table or a countertop. Distance and height are important for this step. Remove the stopper and insert the racking cane into your carboy. Keep the end away from sediment as best you can. Keep your pot of cooled priming sugar on the ground or on a chair below. Hold the clamped end of your tube over a glass or bowl Unclamp and let the water flow out of the tubing. This starts your siphon. Clamp down as soon as beer begins to flow out of the tube. Your tubing should now be full of beer. Now unclamp your tubing over your pot of priming sugar and let the siphon transfer your beer. carboy as it drains to keep the cane submerged and to maintain the suction. You may notice clumps of sediment or spent hops. Try to avoid sucking them up, but it is okay if some sediment does get transferred into your pot. It won't harm the beer and will eventually settle out in bottles. Bottling your beer. Once beer is completely transferred, place your pot up on a high surface and place your bottles down low on a chair or on the ground. Mix very gently with a sanitized spoon to evenly distribute the priming sugar. Avoid creating air bubbles. Now you'll start another siphon to transfer beer from pot to bottles. 
we're going to demonstrate how to use a mini auto siphon, which can replace your racking cane and tubing filled with water. If you don't have an auto siphon, you'll simply follow the steps in the last chapter again. To use an auto siphon, simply pump the cane a few times to start the flow of beer. Keep an eye on the fill line. You want to stop when beer reaches the base of the bottleneck. Use the clamp to start and stop the flow of beer. You might need to use two hands to do this. We recommend bottling over a towel and keeping all your bottles close together to avoid spills. Be sure not to underfill your bottles, otherwise they'll take much longer to carbonate. Tilt the pot as needed, and if you lose suction, you can always start the siphon again. Remember, it's okay if some sediment gets into your bottles. bottles are easy to seal and they don't require single-use caps. If using new bottles, they'll be pretty tight and might take some effort to clamp shut. When capping pry off beer bottles, it's important to get as much leverage as you can over your workspace. Choose a sturdy, flat surface about waist high. Place a cap on the bottle and carefully align the capper over your bottle and push down to seal. You might need to readjust the positioning. You'll feel resistance and then a pop into place. You'll need to use some force to lift the capper up and off the bottle too. carbonate in a dark room temperature place for two weeks. After two weeks, place a bottle in the fridge to chill before enjoying. If the carbonation levels are to your liking, place the rest of the batch in the fridge to lock in the carbonation. If you'd like bottles a bit more carbonated or the carbonation's falling flat, let the rest of the bottles stand at room temp for another three to five days before testing another. <laughs>